looking back, when you were growing up, um, you were a CODA. CODA is a child of deaf adults. Right. Um, do you remember um, how did you understand that home situation? Okay, my parents do not really speak, right, and they cannot hear me, so I need to use sign language with them. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you remember your first sign, or it was just so natural that you don't even you can't pinpoint? No, I do remember my first oh, sign. You do? Yeah, and um, I, no, I I was probably I was definitely signing before I remembered the concept of sign language connected to objects. Mm -hmm. uh, so my mother, I remember being three years old, and or two years old. My mother, she she was in the kitchen, and I walked up to her, and I always said I was thirsty. So I think this sign for thirsty is. <laughs> it's like a baby, right? <laughs> or, or it could be this, right? Mm -hmm. And so my mother, she, she took the cup with a glass of water, right? And she showed it to me. And I was like getting ready to grab it. And mm -hmm. she said, wait. I was, felt like a dog. <laughs> training training. Me. And, uh, and so I waited. And she's like, this is water. Uh -huh. W. Oh, and, water. and water. And Drink. like drinking into it. I said, this is water. And I was very confused. I said, why don't you just give it to me? Uh -huh. And she said, this is water. Mm -hmm. And then I decided, oh, okay, maybe I should just mimic what my mother's doing. So I did probably something like like this, two fingers, or this, or, or this, right? And then she gave it to me. Uh -huh. And that's when I realized sign language is representing something, something yeah. right? right? And and so in that sense, I became, I, I followed the footsteps of Helen Keller. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, okay, so you realized, okay, sign language is, it's, you communicate in sign language right. in this house, right? Right. But then you were growing up and then you were a teenager. Did you ever um, feel that you were kind of tired of that? Because you can also use your voice, you know? Did you ever wish, like, oh, I wish I could just say it, you know, instead yeah. of just going and, yeah. like, you get physically tired? I don't think it's physically tired. I think just, um, you can't just, uh, with sound, even with your with, with people who are not looking at you, you can just say something and they can right. acknowledge you, right? right. Or, you don't but have with to sign be. language, it's like, hey, look at me! <laughs> and, uh, or if I was in my bedroom and I had to say something to my parents, I'd have to get no. up and go, and go, right? And that kind of spilled into my brother and I. Even though we're both hearing, uh, if I had something to say to him, I'd say, hey, Vic. He'd say, what? i said, come here, I gotta tell you something. Okay. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> come here, Just I gotta tell you something. No, you come here. I'm like, no, you come here. And then finally, we'd have to meet like halfway. Right. Yeah. And then so that became a uh, very, uh, I guess, Kind of a habit. Yeah. <laughs> Just, <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. Phone call. Um, but yeah, I was really frustrated. Um, when was up. that? When oh, you were, since when? I would say maybe eight or nine. Oh, I see. Yeah. Was there any um, frustration up to the point that you felt like? Why do I have to do that? Oh yeah, I was like praying to God, it's like, oh, why well, my parents gotta be deaf and like, you know, and then, uh, you know, nothing happened. <laughs> 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 it didn't like become hearing. <laughs> uh, so when I was younger, I was like, oh God, please, right? Um, and uh, I, at one point, I thought my parents were faking it. <gasps> no. Yeah, I think, no. I think um. a lot of codas, they always suspect their parents are faking. Cause, Growing up, we don't have a lot of uh, similar Exposure, right? Right, friends, right? I mean, we did, but it wasn't the majority, right? Like, cause I would meet my parents' friends who had kids who were my age, but we just thought that was, like, them. just them, right? Yeah. And, uh, but you know, you have teachers, like everybody, we, you know, parent-teacher conference, like, we see everybody's parents, they're all hearing. Right. And, um... Did you ever talk with your parents about that? Did you ever ask, like, what's going on here? I would say, like, why are you deaf? Oh. Right? What and, did they say? Uh, they gave me the very like logical reasons like well, my father as a mother she had birth complications maybe she had tuberculosis while oh. she was pregnant with him and maybe that's how he lost his hearing mm -hmm. uh, for my mother she uh, got really sick 
could have been scarlet fever, could have just been a regular fever. And the medicine that they used, mm. uh, that affected. affected her hearing. Right. So it actually destroyed her hearing. Mm. So... Um, was that when she was little or she Oh, when she was probably... Um, well, she was like an infant, maybe less than one years old. Okay. So, and I would, you know, of course, every once, six months or one year, like, kids would just keep asking the same thing, like, hey, why are you deaf? Like, why are you deaf? So, you would have to, like, repeat it. Yeah. yeah. So, that was the reason, and, uh... Is your family kind of like a uh, patient and slow family, or everybody's, like, emotional, and they go, like... They're Chinese, uh -huh. so I'd say it's both. <laughs> it can be, like... No, not like so much. It's just could, could be like you know Chinese people, they usually aren't. Um, I don't know. They they don't like to get worked up. Uh huh. Right. They're usually like chill or relax. Mm -hmm. You know. Like you see like those Chinese dudes on the street, just like oh, all right, oh, all right, oh, oh. <laughs> but when they get into a fight, it becomes like a f like fireworks. Yeah. Right. It's like an explosion. Right. So, so I I would say like, they want to relax. But they're easy to get angry, right? <laughs> and easy to get like I yeah, see. like into like a battle, and nobody says sorry. Oh no! <laughs> so it's completely opposite of Japanese culture, right? I nobody see. says yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah, it's just like oh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I see. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you, are you close with your parents? Do you yeah, you know, you know, with the uh, technology today, mm. right? Like using, I can Skype with them, or use FaceTime. Pretty technology. Pre-Skype pre time. Pre-Skype time. How did you guys uh, keep in touch with friends, with families, you know? Yeah, there was... Because now it, it's on Skype, you don't yeah. have to be, it's free. Yeah, you it was uh, the fax machine. How? You would just have to write it, oh. your messages. Like, so my mother's family is still in Hong right. Kong, and so she would write um, letters. letters or faxes mm. to my her sister. Right. So before the fax machine, it was like just letters. Mm. Right? Okay. And, and with photos. Because photos are definitely important. Yes. Definitely important. Yes. You need photos for deaf right. culture. For everything. Yeah. Uh, so, and before that, like, if if I was, let's say, outside or I was going to be late. Yeah. So this is when I was in my teens. I was just hanging out with my friends. Right. They're, my parents didn't have a pager. I had a pager. Mm. Right? So they can, they can page me. Uh-huh. Like, right? where are you? Your pager will only receive phone numbers. Uh -huh. So if it if it rang or buzzed, you would just see a number. Mm -hmm. So my parents, they I taught them how to just dial up my pager. I forget how it works. You just dial the pager number. And so that's how you knew that you need to come home. Or that they were searching for me. Uh -huh. Right. So it would be like, you know, just a little like, uh, oh, my my home number. Uh -huh, so. And then if I if I wanted to say I was going to be late. Um, there was a relay service. Yes. So I would call this one one eight one eight hundred no, free no, number, and then the operator would have a machine that kind of looked like a typewriter, mm -hmm. and you could put the phone um, headset onto the mount, mm -hmm. and that the other person who had that machine, it would it would like sound like Morse code, like did it did it did it did it, and then that would translate into um, text. Okay. So it was like n like chat messaging. Right. Except you needed a big like keyboard. Old school. Like, yeah, and you had to get your phone and like put it on top of it. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, my parents, they didn't know English that well. So my mother, my mother, she would just say, hello. <laughs> and then and the, the operator would say, hello. hello. And I would say, uh, me, Danny, go home. Now. Uh, no, I wouldn't say now. <laughs> it was like, oh, me go home like uh, eleven o'clock. Yeah. Night. Yeah. And then she would, the operator would, would type it out, and my mother would respond, late. <laughs> and I'm like, and I would say, sorry. <laughs> How funny! I I've, I've never heard of this. I know there is a relay service, but I I I know what it is right now. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. And they had like a code because I couldn't see when she was finished talking. Right. So there was, you would just type GA for go ahead. Okay. So she would say her things, her uh -huh. sentence, and then GA. GA. 
And then the operator would say, blah, 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 go ahead. Uh -huh. And I would say, sorry, uh -huh. go ahead. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, um, okay, so you were growing up and then you went, um, you, basically you decided to become a sign language interpreter. Yeah, kind of uh, because of economical reasons. Right. I had, I was looking for a job. <laughs> and uh, grow, uh, graduating with my BFA in writing, it wasn't really helping me because I wasn't going out to studios or I wasn't going to move to California, mm -hmm. which is where most of the writing jobs are. Right. So, um, you know, still living back in New York and I had an apartment and I had to figure out how to pay rent. Uh, and I got in contact with my sign language teacher, which is funny, it's like, why did I take sign language classes? This is before the interpreting. Okay. Uh, I took a, in my college, in my university, I took a sign language um, like 101 class, mm -hmm. and someone recommended it to me. It's like, oh, this, this is like right up your alley, you should do this. And so I, I was like, ah, oh, I guess so. So I went to class, I introduced myself in sign language, I was like, hi, my name is Danny. And the teacher said, oh, hi, please have a seat. And then I overheard some students, when they were saying, when they were watching us converse, they said, wow, he knows sign language, that's so cool. <laughs> And so you were when I looked, it was like a room full of women, right? And just one dude, and I was like, I'm in the right class. <laughs> right? So I didn't know that sign language was so popular, right? And especially amongst uh, uh, females. So growing up, I, I, I was always picked on, or people on the streets, they would point to our family and be like, oh, they're, like, they're signing, they look like monkeys. Mm. And you're doing hand gestures. Oh. So I was really, that's why I, when you asked me before, did I have uh, any issues with sign language? I did yeah, for a long time, for since I was eight to maybe, I guess, 16 or 17 years old. The, the thing is that I think it's so popular right now, like it's, it's cool to be able right. to speak sign language, right? right. And people pay money to study it. Right. Um, it's but, on television. Yeah. Right. Like there are TV shows yeah. about that. Yeah. So it was kind of like... Can I, can I just say it? I, I don't want to sign it, right? Oh, for me growing up? Yeah, yeah uh, I, I think the biggest issue is that my parents, since they were immigrants and American Sign Language was their second language, um, they could only teach me what they knew. Right. And uh, so my vocabulary, my, like, it was very basic and concrete science. It, I couldn't explain uh, deeply what I was thinking. Which was really difficult, right? It is frustrating uh, yeah. for kids too, right? When yeah. Kids grow up and they, yeah. they can't express. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So they thinking. would just see me being frustrated and they would have no idea why. And then I would have to explain because of this, 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 this. And like I'd make like a roadmap of my anger. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this is what happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. And this and, is how it makes me feel. And, and then you're giving me this crap, and then like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just uh, puberty, yeah, right. <laughs> which is probably most of it, yeah, right? Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never know. So, and then after gradu uh, graduating and then going to the interpretive program, I just met uh, deaf professors mm -hmm. and deaf uh, deaf uh, teachers. Are they all deaf? Not all. No. Uh, I would say half the half of them were were deaf, uh, and half of them were professional sign language 